How to run a ROS2 application over multiple machines? Well, that's what I'm going to explain in this tutorial using a laptop as machine number one and a Raspberry Pi as machine number two. And let's get started. And before you even start to run a ROS2 application on multiple machines, the first very important thing is to make sure that those machines can communicate between each other and basically that they are on the same network. So here's my setup that I'm going to use for this tutorial. On the left, I have, well, on this laptop, I'm running a virtual machine with Ubuntu 22.04. And I have installed ROS2 Humble here. On the right here, I am, so here I'm on Windows, but as you can see, I am on a Raspberry Pi, which is running also Ubuntu. So on the left, this is my laptop here. On the right, I'm remotely connected with SSH to a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we have two different machines here that are both running Ubuntu and I've installed ROS2 on those two machines. Now, well, let's do hostname dash I here and hostname dash i and of course what i've done is i made sure to connect those two machines to the same network so the virtual machine and the raspberry pi are connected to the same network so here i have the ip address of the virtual machine now from the raspberry pi i can do ping with 192.168.249.255 and you can see that the ping is working. So the two machines can communicate between each other. And so if you don't have that, well, you will not be able to do anything. So that's the first thing to check. And then, well, once the two machines are on the same network, and if you have installed ROS2 on both machines, well, basically here, you will see that's super easy. How to run a ROS2 application over multiple machines? Well, everything is done. You just need to run your node. So let's start on the Raspberry Pi and let's run. So ROS2 run demo nodes cpp. So make sure you have this package installed. If not, you install it. And let's start the listener. So I'm going to start the talker and listener node. So basically the talker node is going to publish some uh, messages and the listener is going to receive those messages. So I start with the listener and let's run that. And well, nothing happens. You can see the node is running, but no messages arrive, of course, because there is no publisher. And now on the virtual machine here on my laptop, I'm going to do ROS2 run demo node CPP with the talker. And now look at that. You can see that what's being published here is being received in the Raspberry Pi. And then I stop the publisher and you can see we stop receiving messages. And so that's as simple as that. If you have multiple machines, so here I have two, but if you have three, four, five, ten, you just connect them to the same network and you can run any node you want on any machine. This node will be able to talk to other nodes on other machines. But well, now this setup is very simple and maybe too simple because, so let's say you work with a team of people or you have, let's say, 10, 20 computers on a network and you want to run different ROS2 applications. Well, if one person starts an application, another person starts an application, everything will be mixed together. And you maybe don't want that because, well, that's going to become a mess very quickly. And well, one solution would be to just use different network for different applications, but that's not really a good solution. So I'm going to show you how to do that actually very easily with the ROS domain ID environment variable. And just a quick parenthesis here, if you like this tutorial, if you like the way I teach, and if you are currently learning ROS2, well, I have a complete course for you, ROS2 for beginners, where you will learn ROS2 from scratch, step by step, with hands-on lessons and a lot of projects. So if you are interested, you can check out the link in the description. And now let's come back to the video. We have here two different machines that are connected to the same network. Let's actually make sure that we can run two different applications here, two different ROS2 applications, and that they are not going to mix between each other. So as for now, if I still run the talker and the listener, well, communication will go through. So actually, let's stop this here on the Raspberry Pi. And on the virtual machine, let's do export ROS domain ID like this is equal to, and let's put any number we want, but it's preferable to use a 
low number between 1 and 232. So let's use 5, for example. Okay, and now we have ROS domain ID is 5. So usually you would do this and then you would source your uh, bash SE, which contains the source line for ROS2. And so this machine has ROS domain ID 5. Now let's start the talker again and let's start the listener here. Well, you can see the listener doesn't get any message. All right. I'm going to stop this. And now on this site, on the Raspberry Pi, let's do clear again. I'm going to do also export ROS domain ID is equal to 5. So it didn't have any ROS domain ID. Actually, maybe let's do print env with grep ROS. And you can see we have different ROS environment variables, but we don't have ROS domain ID. Now let's do export ROS domain ID is equal to 5. Great. And let's source the bash LC. And let's run the talker, actually the listener. Okay, and now let's run the talker on the other side. Okay, great. And it's working. So the communication is working. All right. So because we have set the same ROS domain ID variable here, which is five, then we can communicate between the two machines. And if we have a different ROS domain ID, that's not going to work. So it's as simple as that. If let's say you have another colleague working on another application, then you just ask this colleague to use, for example, ROS domain ID is, uh, which is seven and you use five and you will be fine. And so make sure that you actually export this every time in every session, in every terminal that you uh, are using for ROS2. Okay, so what you can do here is also maybe add it to your bash SC. Okay, you may add this export domain ID, so ROS domain ID, to your bash SC just before you actually do the source line, which is the source uh, opt ROS and then humble setup bash. Okay, just before this line, you can use the export ROS domain ID. And just one more thing, maybe to make you understand even better, is that this ROS domain ID, so if I do export ROS domain ID. This ROS domain ID is only specific to a session, so only specific to a terminal. It's not for the entire machine, okay? So here what I've done is I've actually opened two terminals, so two different sessions on my laptop, on the virtual machine, and I've opened also two different sessions on the Raspberry Pi. And so what I can do, for example, is let's say I put the ROS domain ID to five here, and then export ROS domain ID to five, which means that this terminal on the virtual machine and this terminal on the Raspberry Pi will be able to run the same ROS2 application. But then let's say I do export ROS domain ID with seven. This means here that this terminal will actually not be able to communicate with that one. So any node you start here, will not be able to communicate with nodes here, even if they are on the same machine, okay? Because the ROS domain ID is at the session level. So if I do here also export ROS domain ID with seven, now you can see what we have is basically we can run two ROS2 applications, one which is going to run between this terminal on the virtual machine and this terminal on Raspberry Pi, and another one which is going to run on that terminal and that terminal. So you can even use two different machines to run multiple ROS2 applications. You could have five or 10 ROS2 applications that are running separately on two different machines. Well, that's not necessarily what I would recommend to do, but just to explain that actually this ROS domain ID is specific to a session. So if I do ROS2 run demo nodes CPP with Talker, Okay, it's gonna publish. And then if I do ROS2 run demo node CPP with the listener here, it's not gonna work because we have a different ROS domain ID. Okay, so it's gonna work here. ROS2 run demo nodes CPP with the listener. Okay, it's working here, but it's not working on that terminal because the ROS domain ID is different. And now it's the same. If I start here a ROS2 run demo nodes 
TCPP with the talker. So we have a listener here. We have a listener here. Let's see what's happening. Only that one is going to receive messages. Okay. So you can see I have separated two different applications that are running on the two same machines. So what I would recommend is, well, this is an example to show you what's possible, but what I would recommend is to actually use one ROS domain ID for one machine, all right? And then to make sure that you use the same ROS domain ID between the machines that you want to include in the same ROS2 application and use a different ROS domain ID for each ROS2 application that you want to create on your network. Thank you for watching. Now subscribe here to get more tutorials in the future. Also, check out my online courses if you like what I teach. Links in the description. And see you in the next one.